in there. So mm -hmm. Chief put me into general surgery. Now, and this was at Meharry? At Meharry. Meharry. Uh -huh. And before I got through with that five years, some of the fellows used to call me Mule Brown mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I worked so hard. Mm -hmm. And I've never let anything uh, bother me. Mm -hmm. I was going to make that five years, and I made it as the first woman trained in general surgery at Hubbard Hospital. I wanted to talk about that now. Looking back at Meharry, when you first went to Meharry, of course, I think you've already indicated that mm -hmm. uh, they tried to uh, steer you into uh, nursing yes. and other areas. Yeah. But what was it like uh, being a female and the lone female in such a situation? Uh, and that would be a difficult situation even today. But uh, during that time, uh, when certainly there were very, very few women who were as courageous as you were during the time, uh, what was it like uh, it was, in that situation? It was tough. T-U-F-F. -F. <laughs> it was really tough. I mean, the fellows used to give me the business. And I would work the patients up, and then they would take the patients that I worked up and take them to the <laughs> operating room and operate on them. And I would be lucky if I could be standing down at the foot of the table. Mm -hmm. But I was just insistent that I was going to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, with all credit to Dr. Walker, he saw how set I was, and mm -hmm. he helped me in every way. I, I recall one incident uh, when uh, the chief resident was on me like white on rice. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I can say. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, he announced, he said, okay, D, says we're going to make we're going to start grand rounds on your ward tonight. Mm -hmm. They call you D. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I, I missed supper. I was over there making sure that I had everything in apple pie order. Mm -hmm. Well, here comes the chief at 6 o'clock with the retinue behind him, mm -hmm. you know. His uh, <laughs> right in, in oh, order, yeah. you know. Oh, the, yeah. <laughs> his assistants and all the way down to the mm -hmm. medical students. We got into the first ward and, and I... Uh, gave the record of the first patient, and uh, we called him Scooty. Scooty jumped on me. He says, you didn't do this, you didn't do the mm -hmm. other. And so I just decided that I had had enough. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, just a minute. So I walked out to the nurse's station, got my little short white coat, put it on, and went on down on the elevator down to the snake pit. The mm -hmm. women uh, lived in the snake pit. Mm -hmm. We called it the snake pit. It was a room behind the emergency mm -hmm. because they wouldn't allow us to live up in the mm -hmm. doctor's quarters with the men. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what they expected we were going <laughs> to do anyway. But, but at any rate, I went down there and they were playing dirty hearts. I said, deal me in. They said, aren't you supposed to be on ward rounds? I said, say, deal me in because <laughs> I'm not going to ward rounds mm -hmm. anymore tonight. Telephone rang outside and it was Scooty. He said, D, he says, we're, we're waiting for you. Mm -hmm. uh, are you coming back? And I said, no, I'm not coming back because mm -hmm. I am <laughs> e sick and tired mm -hmm. of all your mm -hmm. foolishness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I went back in, sat down again. The telephone rang again, and it was Dr. Walker. He said, Dorothy, he says, I want you to come up to my office. Well, I knew that that was going to be my last mm -hmm. day of training in surgery because you didn't get away with the mm -hmm. talk with like the, that, uh -huh. see? Mm -hmm. And so I walked into his office. He says, I understand you're having trouble with my chief resident. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I'm not having any trouble. He said, well, did you curse at him? And I said, yes, sir, I cursed at him. He, and Scooty jumped up and said, and she, she cursed at me the second time. He said, did you curse at him the second time? I said, yes, sir. Well, he leaned back in his chair, and he looked over at Scooty, and he said, well, I'll tell you something. Because I never complained to the chief. I took everything that they gave, laid on me. He says, I'll tell you something. If Dorothy didn't get excited mm -hmm. and vent her mind, I would think she was crazy because mm -hmm. he knew what I was going through. Mm -hmm. He looked back at me and he said, now, I'll tell you what I want you to do, Dorothy. He says, I want you to go back down to the snake pit and go to bed <clears throat> and rest mm -hmm. your nerves and get up the, tomorrow morning and come back up on the ward and try not to curse at the mm -hmm. chief resident too many times. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was really an experience. And uh, I think that everything that I went through, mm -hmm. I looked down the road and saw other women coming behind me. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't be just as, quite as tough for them. It was them. a challenge. You recognized yes. it as a challenge sure. and something that you had yes, to. Yes, because uh, I've had girls tell me, in fact, we have a girl uh, over Brentwood, who said that she told her mother, her mother told me that mm -hmm. when she was very, very small, 
she said, I'm going to be a doctor like Dr. D. Mm -hmm, Brown. Mm -hmm, and see, mm -hmm. that's what it's worth. Good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I think it's a valuable thing. Now, uh, and of course, you have uh, many other careers, and, and, and one of the uh, uh, most important, I believe, is, is, is that you've been involved in politics. Uh, I think we've had members of the Tennessee General Assembly on this show on several occasions, uh, female members mm -hmm. of the General Assembly, uh, uh, Mary uh, Pruitt, right. uh, Henry Brooks, and yeah. Thelma Harper, and mm -hmm. I think all of them have mm -hmm. indicated that they owe a deep debt of gratitude for the political path breaking that uh, you were involved in. Now, how did you make that transition from uh, surgery really into well, politics, and when did that happen? I really didn't make a full transition. What actually happened was, at, in the latter part of the 60s, the decade of the 60s, uh, the Supreme Court had uh, handed down an edict of one man, one vote, which mm -hmm. meant that they had to uh, alter the districts, the uh, mm -hmm. voting districts. And in so doing, there was one large inner city district. Mm -hmm. And most of our folks lived in that inner city district mm -hmm. at that time. And it meant that, uh, and as the fellows told me, they said, uh, now we want you to, to run for the, the legislature mm -hmm. because you're well known mm -hmm. and you're informed and we want you to do this. Well, I said that I'm busy. I'm practicing medicine and mm -hmm. I, don't know too, I don't know enough about politics, you see? So you were a reluctant warrior in that. Oh yeah, that I was reluctant, uh -huh. yes. But then uh, Harold Love himself, mm -hmm. He uh, wrote to me from a municipal meeting that he was attending and said, we need you now, Dee. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I get back in Nashville, we'll help you to run, and which they did. Mm -hmm. He uh, got the uh, signatures on the uh, certificate and took them down, registered mm -hmm. me, and he came back and handed the paper to me. He says, now, uh, the receipt to me. Mm -hmm. And he says, now, all you have to do is run. Run. <laughs> and that's what I did. I ran, uh -huh. see. And the thing about it is, is that uh, 